नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मास नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मास नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मास homage to the vadivan fully enlightened buddha dear friends in dhamma today as we were uh, discussing the samaditti sutta we have already covered three uh, two uh, aspects of samaditti today we are going to cover the third aspect of samaditti which is four noble truths four noble truths are very central core uh, teachings of the buddha uh, four noble truth is the basic and the fundamental teachings of the buddha so in buddhism uh, four noble truth start with the uh, word dukkha dukkha mean Uh, in english language <coughs> it conveys different different meaning basically dukkha means suffering but when uh, people hear this word they may scared a buddhism and also they may have wrong uh, perception of wrong conception of about buddhism that buddhism is very pessimistic uh, let's see in uh, buddhism dukkha is described e- even in our day to day life we can experience and we can understand uh, we are discussing our problems we are discussing our suffering in a different terms such as we may say dissatisfaction or i am upset i am undergoing through a trauma uh, i am very sad i have a lot of unhappiness going on in my life and i feel very tired i feel very weary and some people might say i ha- i have depression so on and so forth A stressful life these are the some of uh, terms among many other terms we are using to describe our own <coughs> unsatisfactory nature our own uh very painful sad uh experiences we are experiencing in our life so uh suffering in in buddhist uh, terminology does not end there that is why we cannot say the buddhism is pessimistic because buddha has taught suffering the causes the reasons for the suffering and the cessation of suffering and finding eternal bliss and finding eternal peace and also <coughs> this uh ending suffering is begins with eight noble path noble eight fold path so if buddha's teaching is stop at the uh, place of suffering you can say uh, buddhism teaching are solely pessimistic and there is nothing for us to expect uh, optimistic uh, or but let's take a example of a doctor there is a physician doctor who uh, teach uh, who come to visit a patient and uh, when he visit this patient he says to the patient your sickness is so grave it cannot be cured and no matter how nice or very good medicine is given to you you will not be recovered so this is the opinion and the diagnosis of the first physician or the doctor so you can say this kind of diagnosis is a 
pessimistic diagnosis. Then secondly, another doctor come and visit the same patient and after thorough investigation, he said to the this patient, there is nothing wrong with you, everything is okay, there is no sickness in your body, you need no need to have any medicine. So, in this way, he gives a false sense of security, a false understanding of his sickness and this is actually uh, we can say pessimistic because you no matter how is the reality, you will think that your sickness is not there, no sickness in you. So, the third physician comes and he investigate the same patient and uh, maybe take lot of medical checkups and finally, he found out what is the sickness and also he give a course of treatment, he gives a, a course of medicine for this patient so that he can get recover. So, Buddha's teaching of this Four Noble Truth is realistic, neither it is pessimistic nor it is optimistic. Buddha is teaching the reality in the world. Reality in the world is scientific, is natural, it is not something unrealistic, it is something uh, real in the world. So, anybody and everybody can understand uh, true nature because there is no secret teaching, there is no hiding anything. Buddha is teaching what is there in the world, what is there in the universe, what is what we are experience in our own life as suffering. So, apart from this uh, uh, suffering, Buddha says that birth is suffering. For example, when we are having a birth, we have to be in the mother's womb for 9 or 8 months, which is very painful to stay in a mother's womb in the same posture. Uh, with our movement for the fetus. So, it is not a very pleasant experience and also the coming out of the womb, this process also very painful. <coughs> Therefore, uh, birth is suffering and also once you are born into this world, you have to get injections, you have to get this treatment, that treatment. Uh, we have to undergo all heat, cold and all many kinds of other exams and all other experiences in order to survive in this world. Then the not only that, we are undergoing so many sicknesses in our life. So, this is also suffering. If you see in the world, how many millions of people are living without food? Uh, how many millions of people are dying, children dying without, without proper medication? So, in this world, Buddha said, Dukho loke patitita. The whole world is based on the suffering because uh, they are, that does not mean Buddha has told us that there are pleasures, there are happiness. Uh, when you have a family life, there is happiness. When you have possessions, wealth, there is happiness. Uh, and also, when you are healthy, there is happiness. Uh, when you have money and all the resources, the houses to live, all this is happiness. And also you have a spiritual happiness, like attaining trance or jhana and also having a, a led a spiritual life, very free from all the blames and blemishes and you are leading a right life. So, you can have many kinds of happiness. But uh, true uh, nature of our life, these happinesses will not last forever. They last for very, very short time, very, very momentary. That is why the suffering comes. Then we have old age. When we get older, our faculties become weaker 
and we cannot hear things, we cannot do things as before, we cannot walk and also this uh, and also what we want, if we cannot get what we want, it is also suffering. We are lo longing for many other things, many things, but we might not get. And also when we have to associate it with unloved one in an office or in our home, we have to live together with a person who is very unpleasant and unassociable. It's a suffering. And also to be separated from wives, children, they have to separate for their jobs or for their uh, medical reasons or uh, they have to go abroad. So to separation from loved one is also suffering. So if you analyze the list of things we suffer in the world, it's endless, it's uh, no end. So therefore, Buddha said, why this is suffering? Why this suffering is arising in our life? There is a major reason, there is a major cause for that. What is this cause and what is this uh, reason? Buddha said, Tanha or the thirst uh, we are having in our mind is the major root, major cause, major uh, reason for our suffering. Uh, in Tanha, thirst, is insatiable. No matter how many types of nice foods we have experienced, no matter how many pleasant, comfortable, uh, nice experiences we have experienced in our life, we are not satisfied. We are not happy. For example, we want to enjoy a nice meal. In order to enjoy a nice meal, we have to work hard and we have to prepare this food. But the happiness you gain from this nice food is maybe few minutes, few seconds. When the food is in your tongue, you will experience the happiness. But once this food is passed down from your tongue to from your mouth, that happiness goes. So, but we will crave, we will <coughs> have desires, we will have defilements, we will have passion, uh, thirst to get more and more nice pleasant experience. We want to hear nice things, we want to see nice things, we want to taste nice things, we want to uh, experience pleasant feelings uh, to our body. So this kind of thirst is, pro the, there are three or four causes for our samsaric journey, birth and death. When we have this thirst, the craving, the desire, we will create good and bad karma. We will create wholesome and unwholesome karma. This will create a punabhava, another rebirth, another life after death. Because we accumulate sankara or mental formations, wholesome and unwholesome energies we are created in our mind. These wholesome and unwholesome energies will give rise to another rebirth, another continuation of this samsaric journey of birth and death. So, <coughs> Buddha said, we need to eradicate this craving. We need to eradicate not knowing true nature, the ignorance. That is why the second noble truth is called Pahatab. We must eradicate, eliminate, destroy this desire or this uh, craving. The third noble truth is called the cessation of Dukkha, Nirvana. So, this is the uh, function of the meditation. Through meditation, we can eradicate this craving. We can eradicate this uh, suffering by through meditation. In Satipatthana Sutta, Buddha has explained many types of meditation including meditation on breathing, meditation on uh, uh, daily activities such, such as walking, eating, whatever, we can make a meditation. And also thoughts process, we can uh, focus on our meditation and thought process, how the craving arising and how this craving subsists uh, and uh, sustain in our mind and how it fades away. So the second noble truth 
is the thirst, the craving, trusna, and we have to get rid of this trusna in order to reach the uh, supreme bliss of Nibbana or ultimate samnum bonum or ultimate peace. Because when we have this insatiable uh, trusna craving, we want more and more. That creates more fire. In Aditya Pariyaya Sutta, Buddha said, eye is on fire, the ear is on fire, the nose is on fire, and the mouth is on fire. Uh, what is this fire Buddha is referring to? What is this fire which is going in our mind uh, all the time? When we have desires, when we have, let's say we have seen something nice, beautiful, then we want to have this nice thing, beautiful thing in our life. Then we have this craving. When we have this craving, the, the raga, the desire, the, the uh, internal uh, desires that is uh, there in our mind will uh, continue to burn inside. That's why Buddha said fire is outside, fire is inside. The third uh, noble truth is called cessation of dukkha. Uh, nirvana. Ni vana. Ni means no. Vana means trusna. When there is no trusna, we have three kinds of trusna. Kamatana, the, the desire for sensual desire, uh, pleasures. Then the bhavatana, the, the desire for to be becoming, re-becoming, rebirth. And the vibhavatana, rejection of pain and rejection of uh, rebirth. These three types of uh, uh, desires will uh, create rebirth. So we have to realize uh, nirvana. In order to realize, Buddha has taught us the path to nirvana. So the path to nirvana is open to everybody. Most of the religion in the world, their salvation, their uh, emancipation, their uh, samnum bonum will reach at the end of the life, after life. But in Buddhism only, you can realize the truth. You can understand the truth here and now. You don't need to wait for another life. You don't need to wait for after death for your salvation. Buddhists can realize this Nibbana but in this very life. They, if they practice the noble eightfold path, the path to freedom, the path to emancipation is there. The path to freedom, path to emancipation, the path to realization of Nibbana uh, is within yourself. Nobody can give it to you. You have to, you, you have to practice it yourself. You have to realize by yourself. Buddha will teach you the way, the method, the, the uh, uh, teachings that can be used to get rid of suffering. So what is the uh, eight Noble uh, eightfold, noble eightfold path. It is uh, Pali. It is said samaditi, samma sankapa, samma vacha, samma kamanta, samma ajiva, samma vayam, samma sati, samma samadhi. So this path is right view. In order to uh, reach the nibbana, we need to have right frame of framework of mind, so that. We will know what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. So when we have this right view that uh, Noble Eightfold Path can be useful, can be used and utilized to realize the truth, that we come to right view. Then Samma Sankappa, right understanding, we must have right intentions, uh, avyapad, avihinsa, all this uh, avyapad means our mind is free from greed, uh, hatred, uh, our mind is free from uh, anger, our mind is free from delusion, our mind is free from uh, hatred, all these right intentions 
when we entertain, uh, we can develop a positive mind towards Nibbana. Then uh, when we are speaking, we must speak the right uh, speech, which is free from lies, which is free from slander, which is free from divisive speech, which is free from gossip uh, and uh, useless talk. So our speech become very meaningful, pleasant uh, and truthful and reliable and people can uh, <coughs> rely on us uh, for our behavior and for our trust can be increased. Sama command, right action. When we living our li livelihood, we must not sell weapons, we must uh, not sell intoxicating drinks and drugs, uh, we must not sell uh, meats and all the other uh, meat products. So this way, we are leading a harmless, a very innocent life, very good life for the, all the other beings. So one aspect of this noble eightfold path is the compassion. So compassion and the wisdom go together in this eight noble path. If there is no compassion, kindness, and only wisdom, then, then that's why the people, the scientists can produce atomic bombs to kill millions of people because they don't have compassion. So human life to flourish, there must be compassion and wisdom. So then the right effort, right effort is making effort to not to do bad things and uh, not to create new bad things or unwholesome things and uh, stop unwholesome actions you are already continuing and create wholesome actions. So this is four types of right efforts. Then uh, in order to get out of this samsaric life, this suffering, Buddha has explained that we must develop right mindfulness, that is meditation. And when you develop right mindfulness, your mind becomes concentrated. So this noble eightfold path is divided into sila samadhi panya. So this noble eightfold path is based on uh, virtues and the concentration of mind. These two factors will lead to the wisdom. So the culmination, the total understanding of the, uh, our true nature will come when you complete these all aspects of the life uh, for eight noble path. So dear friends, today we discuss that eight noble path is the path to freedom, path to emancipation. And when we have true understanding of Four Noble Truth, then we can have right view, right understand, Samadhi. So hope to see you again in another episode with the Samadhi Sutta. May the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha bless you, guide you and protect you. Namo Buddhaya.